Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Do We Know Them? I'm Jesse Smiles here with Lily Marston, and we are back for episode. 38. Yes, Beautiful we are. number. Look at us accomplishing things one after another. We haven't had another. a cheers in a while. Oh, mm, here we go into the abyss. Cheers. <laughs> you know what the best thing to do when you're sick is? Drink a mango White Claw, I heard. I just realized I had a pineapple lemonade one and it tastes like kind of pina colada y and I'm not a fan. It gives me coconut vibes, which is... Oh, absolutely not. Like, that's not That's not the flavor. Why? Why? Today's episode and really do... I'm, I'm really sorry in advance for my voice. Um, it's raspier than usual. I have been sick for quite some time and um, not getting better. So here we are. It takes so much for me. I guess you're, you're not like losing your voice, but I love it when my voice gets raspy or if I lose it at all, because it's so, so rare. Like it gives you like the Sophia Bush-esque rasp. And one time I tweeted her about it and I was like something about being sick, but at least I sound kind of like Sophia Bush. And she responded and said that she wishes that I, she could send me a Ricola or something. This is the part where I pretend I know who Sophia, so Sophia Bush is. Sorry. <laughs> Do we know them? No. You didn't watch One Tree Hill? No, I feel like we've been over this. Or was that Seventh Heaven? Another soap opera. I guess you're not a big TV person. I am. I, I totally am, but not that kind of TV. You watch like reality TV. I watch Jersey Shore. <sighs> Which, speaking of you guys, I'm really sorry. We're not going to be covering the Vanderpump Rules drama because we don't. Because Lily it. told me no. <laughs> I mean, did you want to research it? Like, I didn't even know how we were. I have no idea who any of the people are. I know. I looked in for. I looked into it for like maybe two seconds before I was like. <sighs> Yikes, I just don't care. I'm not invested. I'm not invested. That's what it really is. We're not, like, we haven't been here. It reminds me of um, when I was, like, interning at Clever and I would help write the news stories. And they would be like, here, Lily, write this Vampire Diaries recap about season four, episode 15. And I'm like, who are these people? Oh, <laughs> uh, but come on. Vampire Diaries slays. Oh, my God. What a segue. An intentional segue on your behalf. Because one of the people we're talking about has a son that looks like uh, 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 now I can't remember his name. Stefan? Stefan? Stefan Salvatore. Yes. See, you know more than me. From Vampire Diaries. The son looks like him. And that was like her whole shtick on TikTok. So shall we just get into it? <laughs> oh, I, I kind of for a second even blanked what we were talking about. I was like, wait, yeah. what? We do have a few topics to cover. Um, unfortunately, there is a Haley and Selena update in this that I begged Lily. I just said, please, no more. Just please. I just mean, please. I, we can't. I feel like we have to see it through. No. This is not deaf noodles for me. I'm not, I'm not invested like that. Lily claims it's what the people want. So if you do want that, it's going to be at the end. I feel like I'm not even that personally invested, but I feel like we just kind of have to keep, keep taps. I did see something about his birthday that is suspicious if it's true. So we'll get into that. It's not like more like, here's the video of Haley in 2012 creeping on him. It's more um, stuff that like people have taken things too far. Right. Oh, love that. Well, anyway, so speaking of people taking things way too far, we venture out for our first topic into TikTok moms, which take everything too far. <laughs> I was going to say, you guys, we have an obscure TikTok drama. It's your favorite. <laughs> It's actually not so obscure. Like it's been everywhere. And I feel like mainstream news, at least one of them is like picking it up because it's so fucking insane. I will say I have purposely not looked into it because you're going to be teacher today and I'm just going to sit here and learn. Well, we'll do the first one being the Saram rap, which I thought it was Saram rap. It's Saran with an N rap. Did you know this? You thought it was an M? Oh, I thought that, was, thought that was a widespread thing. Yeah, I did think it was. <laughs> you yeah, like, thought it was a Mandela effect. <laughs> I, it's always been the brand. Yep. Oh, uh, well, the brand. I thought the brand is yeah, like glad or something. What's saran then? Yeah, what is saran? I think saran is the material. See that? Now Mandela isn't effect. Isn't it plastic? A lot of mysteriousness surrounding saran. I think rap. we're just dumb. <laughs> anyway, continue. So this only includes two TikToks that we're going to be reacting to. It's the TikTok that got her canceled and then... It is her apology, right? So there's this mom on TikTok. She does OnlyFans. I don't know why that's really relevant, but a lot of people bring it up. Like she does OnlyFans and her husband's in the military and she, you know, posts her kid and I don't know what kind of influencer she is because her account's private now. I'm assuming kind of a family influencer of some sort. And she had like 
over a million followers, if I'm not mistaken. So this is the original video. This is what everybody is losing it over. So it opens up to, she was doing like a trend on TikTok and it opens up to a frame of her. And it says, throwback to when Gunner, which is her son, was one month old, 18 months ago. And Hank thought storking our newborn around in a blanket was just a great idea around his wife who had postpartum anxiety. That's a mouthful. Is Storkin a term that people are familiar with or did she just make that up? I've never heard storkin as like a verb, if that's your question. Yeah, got it. I, I, don't, I don't think it's a thing. What is happening? What? So that was the TikTok. Uh, 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 Initial wait, thoughts? Go go back to the text. One month old? That's not Ooh. one month. One, oh. Throw back to when Gunner was one month old 18 months ago. That's not a mm. one month old, first of all. That's like a full on like toddler. For those of you that are not watching, um, basically what it is, is it is her husband who's dressed in military gear, which is actually kind of important because you're really supposed to have like a code of conduct and be very mindful yeah. when you're wearing military attire. He is holding his son who is heavily wrapped in saran wrap. His son that looks, by the way, around two. Yeah, m maybe about about to turn to because he doesn't even seem to like he's literally arms to his side saran wrap so he cannot move his arms he is in just a diaper and a shirt just a little eggs are free yeah and he looks just like not happy i mean he's not like sobbing he looked like he had been crying maybe. exactly yes i think he had been crying he's not sobbing in the video but he definitely does not look happy he's not laughing he's not having fun and he keeps kind of like flopping over onto the bed because he can't move because his arms are saran wrapped to his side and they're joking that that's his punishment because he's being like a naughty toddler. Oh, I wasn't even reading the text. Is that what it says? She says to him, grumpy toddler all day. And her husband says, yeah, this is the only way. And then um, he says, time out to his son. He's a worm. What the fuck? So when she originally did this, she claims that like, you'll see in her apology, she claims like, I didn't see any negative attention. Like I had no idea people were taking this that way. Let me just make something really clear. And I don't want to like, this show just by nature makes me bring up random ass stories of my past. Love it. But one time when I was high, which obviously I was an adult, so it's not the same as a toddler because they don't understand fully what's happening and their parents are the only people they trust. So you have to t keep that in mind. But I was high, which is like, almost like if I was a baby because I, you get like, I get real confused and vulnerable yeah, okay, sure. and I'm really scared, okay? And very paranoid. I'm not like you, Lily, okay? We can't all hang like you. I don't know. I just become very vulnerable and, and, and kind of scared of the world, right? And people decided to play a prank on me where they like duct taped my, like they came up to me and like started duct taping me and they were cracking up and I literally, I was like laughing, crying, but it was just like pure horror and I was just sobbing. Uh, that like gives me like claustrophobic vibes with like oh my just and hearing that's about duct it. tape but then I think of saran wrap and it's so hot like it's it insulates you know people do it to like sweat at the gym they'll like wrap their stomach you guys I told Jesse before we started filming I'm having not the best back spine day and something's out of place and it just makes me sweaty it like literally I'm just like wet right now if you can see. it makes you feel like you're in saran and wrap. I told her earlier I was like you know the feeling when you're like trying to get dressed when you're like fresh out of the shower like if you were swimming when you're wet and you're trying to put on like legs Leggings, for example, and it's like just the worst, most, it just feels awful. I feel like a, a more slippery version. Listen, I know every kid's different. Some kids are like more rambunctious and some are more scared and some whatever. No matter your kid's personality, no matter your relationship to your kid, he has no fucking idea why you're doing this. He is too young. He doesn't understand. And even if he was older, it would not be okay. Even in a situation where like he was maybe enjoying it, it was like a game, they were like playing or something. And he was like, yeah, wrap me. I don't even know when that would actually happen. It doesn't feel like it would, but I feel like as a parent, you would say no, because that's not a quick thing you can unwrap them from. Like, it's not like you like wrap that's them up point. like a burrito yeah. in a blanket. It's like that could get dangerous fast. Like if you did it too tight. A hundred percent. Yeah, like overheating and then also saran wrap like clings to itself. So then you're trying to get it off. It's clinging to itself. Like if when you get like your luggage wrapped in saran wrap, it's such a pain in the ass. Like you have to just take scissors to it. And I honestly like, my big fucking trigger, and I just despise it, is 
parents thinking it's funny to prank their children. Just in general. Scaring is a very fine line. Like, did you see there was a trend on TikTok where parents brought their like kids to, you remember those like scary maze games when yeah, we were yeah, younger? Yeah. There was like a whole new wave of that on TikTok. I don't think that's funny. No, lifelong trauma. Liter literally traumatic. Like I can remember all the fucking times my brother and my friends and his friends would all prank me and I would be fucking terrified because I've always been so paranoid because my anxiety. You talked about it because that was when um, Marta. Well, yeah, that was one time. But there, yeah, there's been other times because I, because I give the funniest reactions because I'm genuinely terrified. Everyone thought it was so fun to prank me. Okay, yeah, I still think about that shit and I'm still a very terrified and paranoid person. It's not as like blatant as this, but it gives the same vibes as like locking your kid in a closet or something. It's like, awful. It's Anywhere awful. where it's like they are in a situation that they can't get out of. Even like that whole trend where like people would like smack their kids in the face with cheese. I don't even like that. What? Yeah. Oh, you haven't seen that? It's like you get a slice of cheese and you like smack it on the like lands on their face. And it, it's just, I don't like it. Like never does a kid laugh. They're always like, what the fuck is that? Like, I don't understand that. I don't like when kids aren't in on it. Like it's not funny to me. I just feel like kids trust you so much. That's the thing is your, the trust between a kid and a parent. Like there should never be a time that the parent is doing something where the kid has to take a step back and be like, wait a second. Is this yeah. real? My kids have to ask for more tickling because I hate tickling. So like my son will like literally just ask for me to tickle him and then I'll stop like every like few seconds because I'm like, I fucking hate it. He's like more, more, more. Like I don't like kids not being in on it. It's weird because in my head, I, I hate tickling because I am really ticklish. It's weird. I feel like it has to be like if I'm in a certain mood or like in certain places or it's like I will like be the most ticklish ever and it's so uncomfortable if someone's doing it and has you in a position where you literally like can't get away. That's what I think, in, like that's what my head is equating this saran wrap yeah, to. Yeah, I, I feel like it's very dramatic to say, but like I genuinely, like tickling is one of the worst feelings to me on this earth. Like I cannot stand it. It gives you this weird, like artificial feeling of impending doom. Not impending, just full on doom. Like for me, it's like literally, if I know that someone's gonna tickle me, like I just start screaming and punching. I'm not responsible for any injuries if you tickle me. The the weirdest part about it is that you're laughing at the same time. So it's this really conflicted, like, it's like so uncomfortable, but also, oh my God, I hate it. I hate it. You know what I think it is? I mean, we're getting a little off the rails, but tickling to me, I think it's the lack of consent that drives me fucking insane. It's the lack of control. Control, consent, like, it's like the full nine yards where you're literally telling someone stop, 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 and they think it's like this game. I can't stand it. I can't stand Honestly, it. Honestly, in much, much more extreme version, but like if someone was like holding you underwater or something, and it's like, you, they don't know how far they can take it before it's too far. Yeah, exactly. So this video went viral <laughs> it was like, quick. Back to the saran wrap though. Yeah, back to the saran wrap. Or saram, I can't get used to the end. I'm trying. But this went viral basically. People were on her fucking ass. And then Naturally, yeah. it was a very short window of time because uh, per usual, you know, I caught it in real time on TikTok. I mean, as someone that doesn't have a child, this if this came on my For You page, I'd be like, what the fuck? Literally, nothing about this is funny. Not even for a second am I like, oh, well, that's a good, like, no. Then shortly after I see this video from her, her cadence is a little different. See if you can notice, spot the difference here. She seems to have a different vibe about her. Has she changed the tune? I think so. You no, know, um, how I'm gonna start this. Right now we're dealing with a situation where Gunnar has been taken from us until CPS can evaluate our home. Because I posted a video of my husband and son playing. The video was strewed in a way as to people thinking that we were abusing our child. One gunner was like laughing and smiling and it was just a funny thing that Hank did um, because Gunner was getting into like the stove that day and like tried putting a fork in a socket and um, like Hank like playfully wrapped him in cling wrap. He ha had room to move. Like he looked like a little worm, like a little cucumber. He was at no point in distress or crying or anything like that. Like we would never hurt our our son. We would never hurt our ch our child. He's um the best thing that has like ever happened to us. There's a couple things to break down. Number one, I'm not here to like hyper analyze anyone's emotions. I'm sure that, yeah, it probably really sucks to have your kid taken away. I'm not gonna say she doesn't love her kid or that it's not like devastating that he's gone. Like that feeling of like, is my kid okay? He's not in my custody has to be fucking horrifying. However, I think that it doesn't really matter your intention, right? Like 
It, it really doesn't. Well, I mean, we talk about that all, all the, the time. time. Impact is bigger than intention. This is a situation where it's awful that your kid got taken away from you, and I'm sure he will be placed back in the home eventually. But this is a major wake-up call. You don't get to do whatever you want just because you're someone's parent. You don't get to decide what's funny if it's putting your child in an uncomfortable position just because that's your child and you find it funny. And do you want to know what got me about it is like when she's like, he looked like a little cucumber. No, he didn't. Because you thought he looked cute doesn't make it okay. At all. I mean, she is trying to minimize it by saying that. But again, I don't think any of this is intentional. I don't think they were trying to abuse their kid. But I think that they need to get a better grasp on what's acceptable, I guess. I, I, I think it's even... also fucking annoying because I see it all the time, like in real life, like out in public and shit. Stop yelling at your toddlers. Stop hitting your toddlers because they're being toddlers. Stop treating them like you've been a bad Bad toddler all day. I'm gonna wrap you in saran wrap because he touched the stove. And did she say putting fork? Yeah, in that, a that seems I'm like, like a you why problem. Are they, why, why does he have access to forks? Literally, or but I just can't fucking stand it because all these people want to have children and they keep having children. A lot of them have multiple children. And yet you're berating your kids because they're existing as kids. I literally can't stand it. Kids are supposed to be kids. Doesn't mean you can't be like, hey, you're in immediate danger. I'm gonna move you over here. But this kind of like, you've been a bad toddler all day. I'm gonna rap you. That's funny because you've been bad. Fuck off with that. Like, I really can't stand that exactly. shit. I was like, yeah, maybe he wasn't hurt. And honestly, maybe he wasn't even uncomfortable. But you don't know that that's not causing some weird psychological shit that he's then gonna be carrying with him for the rest of his life. I feel like people are gonna be like, you're reaching. Like, that's so ridiculous. But like, I, no. to me, like my personality, if that would have happened to me as a kid, like it would have fucked me up so much even more than I'm already fucked up. And I just also have to, I look at it from, this was something they posted. What are they not posting? That's what a lot of people are saying. <laughs> if you think this is funny, what did you do when he tried to put the fork in the outlet? Exactly. And again, I don't think she's out here slapping her kid. I don't think she's like intentionally abusing them or doing things that she thinks are harmful, but that doesn't mean that it couldn't be harmful down the road. Right. It's weird that, these come up on my For You page because I don't feel like the de demographic for it, but um, trying to break the generational trauma in the kids spill something and they like explain to them that like maybe we are oh, like a little you, more careful you, you next You mean time. my life? And they're like very- That's my whole life. That's what I do every day, all day. And they have like these very mature little discussions with them and the kid then it'll be like a month later and the kid brings it up again and they're like, yeah, I'm gonna be more careful this time. And it's so sweet. And it's like, yeah, I, I absolutely am like, <laughs> I'm like, mom, I hope you're not listening. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> but, um, definitely like if I like did something wrong when I was little, I was like definitely felt immediate like shame and guilt yeah, over it. It 100%. was never like, oh, everything's gonna be fine let's work together to fix it can like, you no, imagine no, like oh, how we would be right now if we did have that and it doesn't mean that our parents were like they did the best with what they had and, and under their circumstances yeah that's the thing it's like not nothing but love my mom <laughs> she's the best and it is a generational thing for sure and it's hard it is fucking it is harder to because what that takes is emotional regulation and you don't realize until you become a parent how emotionally dysregulated we are we're constantly like yeah. so quick to be like fuck why did this happen i am no longer even a yeller so like it's took time with my son to like when he was in immediate danger or something not to be like don't do that don't do that like stop stop you know and then now I don't ever yell never I never have to yell. because the problem is you yell then you have to start yelling louder and louder and louder and louder and louder because they're not fucking taking it serious because it doesn't work they're desensitized exactly to it and I've seen it time and time again and then a lot of parents resort to hitting their children because they're just not listening and then you see the kids trying their parent they'll be like doing things just to get that out of them because it becomes a game it becomes this weird sick like cycle so it does take a lot of work but once you do it and once you establish that and you show your kid like I am your safe place and we're gonna work together to fucking figure out life together like it doesn't mean you get to do whatever the fuck you want sorry it doesn't you could have achieved the same like if you were trying to like silly punish them or something like i'm trying to like find a way to be like wrap a blanket around them or something saran wrap here's the thing my son is autistic a lot of you guys know this he would love to be wrapped in saran wrap like for real for real and i, I swear like it's just totally something he would totally go for but I would never fucking do this. Like, I would never wrap him in, because like, I know that even if he would like have fun in a moment, he would want like out in a second and he would just be freaking out and I would never do it. Would Which brings me it. back to what I said earlier. It's like, I mean, even like babies love to be swaddled. I love to be swaddled. Not in saran wrap. Like, <laughs> exactly, not saran wrap because it's not a quick thing you can break out of. And like then, if you do like, yeah, maybe you could cut him out, but then even that's dangerous because you're holding fucking scissors or something right next yeah. to them. Like all around, 
How do you get to the point that you're like, here, honey, I'll grab the saran wrap? Or what? No, well, it seems like something her husband just did and like maybe brought him to the room like that. And she's like, this is hilarious. No, no totally. I don't think she like agreed with it. Uh, like it wasn't a joint uh, right, right, effort, right. I don't think. But regardless. Like, we would never hurt our, ch our child. He's um, the best thing that has like ever happened to us. Uh, yesterday, so like I posted that video like two days ago, and like the response that it gotten was positive. So like I didn't even know like that somebody had thought it it was bad until yesterday when a cop showed up at our door. What? And separate separated us as a family. Like we went down and like made our statements and thinking that like Gunnar was gonna like be returned to us that day and that like CPS would do their investigation and see that our home is safe um and that we meant our child no harm. I don't know what to do whether to stay quiet or post a video or like private my my uh social media because of the amount of hate that i'm getting so the video that we're watching right now scrolls through the comments at the time and it's a bunch of people supporting her and saying like i'm like this is ridiculous i can't believe you got your child taken away by cps to that I say, listen, this is a very broken system. I'm not gonna pretend that CPS yeah. is perfect. My mom got CPS like falsely called on her when we were younger and we got interviewed and everything. All I can say is in my experience with CPS, like I feel like taking a kid is like the last fucking resort, especially like a toddler. I could see CPS being like, hey, you can't post shit like this. This is absolutely unacceptable. Giving them like a very stern talking to and a warning and like if this ever happens again, but they took the child. The fact that someone watched the video from CPS and was like, shit, we got to get that kid out. Like, and then interviewed them and was still concerned. It can't be just that video. It just can't be. So no, no, no. And it's that they then met them. And like, it's weird because if someone watched it and was like, it was, I'm not going to say harmless, but it's like no one got actually hurt, but they need, again, like you said, a warning, a strict talking to perhaps. I also do think it was concerning that she was like, what do I do? Do I post a video about it? it why no. is that even crossing your mind. Some people were pointing that out where it's like, I'm sorry if my son, it was because of social media that my son was gone, you wouldn't find me near a fucking phone for the foreseeable yeah. future. I'd be like, yeah. I'm done with TikTok. I am posted on fucking Instagram. I'm done. Like, fuck this shit. I wouldn't even delete it. I would just not ever use it again. It literally wouldn't even be a thought to make a video. It would only be a beeline for how do I get my child back. That was a definite red flag for me that she, yeah. that's like one of her first thoughts is what to do after. And it's, that's one of the options. My miracle baby, like, he's my was my fourth pregnancy after three miscarriages and he's the light of my life. Some people are, 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 are taking this video out of context and like not even knowing Hank or I, I make zero money off of my social media. My, my TikTok is not monetized like at all. I don't make any money off of my kid. I just post little vlogs sometimes and like little pieces of like our life together. I just feel really helpless in this situation and I feel so dumb for posting, for posting that and like thinking it was just like a cute family video and then it turning into this. It's, I know that people are gonna are gonna hate me or like just like have opinions on this and like I absolutely understand that. I just want people to know that like I love that little boy more than anything in the whole world and I would never hurt him and neither would my husband. We made a mistake and we don't deserve to get our child taken away because of it. Okay, so um, question though, was the mistake you wrapping your son in saran wrap or was the mistake you posting it? Because you're making it seem like you just shouldn't have shared it because it was a family moment. So Aunt Karen is a TikToker who you might remember from the, God, we didn't have this podcast during that times, the Deep in My Womb Lands drama. The what? Deep in my womb lands. My, my womb, my womb lands. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Oh my God. That was like the journey of a fucking lifetime. Anyway. Literally never heard that in my life. Aunt Karen was involved in that. But regardless, she is a like call out TikToker and it's actually kind of cringe. She does like this Karen's court where like she dresses up in like judge, like a Judge Judy, like literally a robe, like a judge robe. And then she has like people coming in and out of the live and it's like chaos, whatever. Anyway. Kind of love that. Yeah, it was kind of, it's kind of cringe. I don't know. But um, she's problematic in her own ways. Like people have a lot to say about her, the way she calls people out. Yeah. But she 
called out this saran wrap lady and she commented on Aunt Karen's TikTok and said this, I made the biggest mistake of my life posting this video. Genuinely and truly, he was laughing and smiling and was out of the plastic in under five minutes. And to that I say, she just confirmed the biggest mistake of her life was posting it, not doing it. If you have your child legitimately taken out of your home and you are faced with that kind of reflection and you think the problem was you posting the video. And also she further confirms that because then she even goes on to say, I don't make any money on TikTok as if the problem is that she's exploiting her kid. It's a problem, but it's not the problem. Like it's like, <laughs> yes, exactly. And I hate the rhetoric too, as someone who has also, you know, suffered a miscarriage. Like I hate the rhetoric of like, this baby was very wanted, therefore I could never hurt them. Again, like she wasn't hitting the kid. I don't think she was purposely trying to abuse them. I think that she needs to be more aware of what kind of effects her actions have on her kid long-term. And right. that's the bigger conversation here. But you're gonna get your kid taken away and you think that the problem is because you posted a video. Well, I can't even fucking fathom it just because of the way, not to like to to my own horn, but because I'm a really awesome parent. Me and Nassim like literally dedicate our lives to like making sure our children are protected and like in and feel safe in our home to be who they are. And like, we're not their enemy. Like we're just here to keep them safe, love them, provide for them, that's it. My daughter is around the age of this kid. And like, she's so sensitive, like literally like her water falls and she's like, Oh, like, you know, like it's literally like the world is fucking ending. I just can't imagine intentionally putting her through any ounce of distress. When she feels like, even though the moment I know she's not actually in distress, but like she is, like to her, it's very real and she's very, very stressed out. This is like so far above a tantrum or like anything. And exactly like what you just said, this might not in the moment be causing a bunch of damage. Honestly, long-term, it might not be causing a bunch of damage but it could. So wouldn't you want to avoid it either way? Well, and the thing is too, is like, I honestly believe like, if you love your kids, and I'm not saying she doesn't love her kids, I'm just saying like, if you love your kids, take feedback of people who believe your child is in danger. That goes for car seat safety. That goes for, you know, safety when they're eating. I see parents get mad on TikTok when people are like, hey, you know, this is the danger of like front facing your child too soon. And there's like real fucking life threatening dangers to doing that. And I didn't know that with Noah and I front faced him way too fucking early. And then there's like people who get pissed when they get told to like smush their blueberries because they're literally one of the top choking hazards. It's like, do you love your kid and you want to protect them or not? Like, it's not a like, we're telling you you're the worst fucking person on earth. They always take it as an attack. And I do think that people are a little too, uh, they Harsh. offer their advice a little too willingly and um, unwarranted on the internet. But in this case, don't feel like that was the situation. And if CPS agreed and took your kid, I just am I'm blown away that she not only says about posting it as the problem, but then right after talks about how she didn't make any money as if those affect this at all. Yeah, that's the main thing to me. And the kind of the main takeaway is like, I'm not saying again that it's a perfect system. I'm just saying that it definitely makes me do a double take. The fact that her child is actually not in the home with them anymore. They saw something other than this video. Cause this video is bad, but not take your child away bad. And the fact that she focuses so much on the fact that she posted it is the problem does bring me back to what is she not posting? And then also maybe that concerns CPS when they're doing the interviewing and like, they don't see what the issue even was to begin with. They're probably Clearly. like, so you don't understand why that was not, you know? I agree with you. I think the kid will eventually be placed back with them. And maybe it's just gonna be a longer process because they, be became aware that these parents are not, <laughs> I'm like, I'm blanking on the word. I know this is super random, but like, why the fuck is he wearing gloves? I just see like the still of him, he's wearing gloves. It's very serial killery. Yeah, and the military outfit doesn't help, no offense. And also, not to mention the other danger, he's on the bed in saran wrap. Yeah, you're right there, but like, if he plops in any other direction and you don't catch him, he's flying off the fucking bed head first exactly. with no arms. <laughs> like, this was not supposed to be this long, but that is like the weekly thing that happened the top topic on TikTok mom drama on TikTok this week. Oh, fucking A. I know. It's pretty bad. It's pretty, like, I did not like that video and I'm definitely blurring his face when I put that video in because it's pretty devastating. Like, I, I just can't. But know that he doesn't look happy in it. Yeah, he doesn't look happy. He looks like a toddler who had, like, a runny nose and was, like, kind of crying Like, he just bit. had a tantrum and now they're, like, being silly about it afterwards. Exactly. Like, That's what it looks he's like. He's wrapped in saran wrap. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> 
Hello there, it is Jesse here for an update. So basically, long story short, we already kind of predicted this when we were talking about it, but yes, the child has been returned to the family. It's still kind of unclear why he was taken away in the first place. I don't entirely think that's our business, to be honest. However, I am kind of on the fence with how Savannah decided to go about it, which is to post a TikTok kind of announcing that she was not gonna be posting TikToks anymore. And I mean, I think that that's a good decision to not post TikToks, but I think that all in all, she needs to just stop kind of prioritizing social media in moments of like severe family distress, especially if this is not even a job for her. It's like, just girl, just go be with your kid and just stop doing this shit. But yeah, that's a quick update. And honestly, like I said, this is not a perfect system. All in all, he probably is way better off with his family and with his parents. And I honestly do hope that this was a big learning lesson in not just not posting controversial stuff, but not doing controversial stuff with your kid. This is a side note and kind of speculation, but when I was researching the update for Savannah, I came across a lot of pretty insane allegations from her past, just like online, things that she's done and said. And I don't know enough about about it to talk about it just yet, but I do find it interesting how someone who did something so insanely weird and I don't know why anyone would do that turns out to be someone that people are saying is a controversial individual. That kind of makes sense. But anyway, that's the update. That's all. Well, we do have uh, some more TikTok drama to discuss, but first let's do a quick ad read because we have another sponsor, you guys. Today's episode is sponsored by MD Hair. If you guys don't know, MD Hair is basically a subscription service that's gonna provide you with everything you need to reach your hair loss goals. As someone who lost a lot of hair when I had my second child, I lost hair when I had my son, but nothing like my daughter. Like nine months postpartum, hair was coming out in chunks. I was having a crisis. I was telling Lily to Photoshop my bald spots out of thumbnails. Like it was bad, girl. It happened a few times. But since then, I've been trying a lot of different things to help grow my hair back. And I haven't been trying this long enough to know if I'm gonna be Rapunzel anytime soon, but I do have some hope. However, I am very picky about like hair products, especially shampoos. My hair is very oily. Like I'll have legitimately like soaked oil hair the day after washing it. It's so annoying. And this shampoo has been amazing. Like their shampoo, I'm obsessed with it. And then they also have this customized hair serum that I put in my hair and you would think it's gonna be oily because it's a serum. No sister, it dries down right away and you look fabulous. And the ingredients are gonna help you grow your hair while it's in your your head. Speaking of ingredients, apparently there's over a hundred natural ingredients in all these products. And your subscription also includes a 24 seven free medical chat with dermatologists and registered nurses. And before you get your shampoo, conditioner, all the products you need, you can upload a picture of your scalp after taking their quiz and you get an instant image analysis and then they give you all of the products that'll work for you. And I think it's great because I feel like hair loss in general is kind of a more male skewed yeah. issue, at least in the media and stuff. And you don't really see a lot of women's hair loss products, so this is perfect. If you guys wanna try MD Hair and customize your hair regrowth treatment, use our promo code DWKT70 and get your first month of customized products at 70% off. That is a good deal. Very good deal. Thank you so much to MD Hair for sponsoring this episode. Okay, well, we do have another topic, but- we um, have two. Oh yes, we do have two topics, but I guess they're coming in a second for you. For us, they're going to have to wait till tomorrow. We're gonna have to film this over two days. We're gonna look different is what we're saying. So we'll see you in a second. Shall we snap and it'll be tomorrow? Yes. <laughs> One, two, three. Wow, magic. It. I wish I could say we were done with the TikTok moms, but we're not. We have another TikTok mom that I think we spoke about in our first ever episode. Do you wish we were done with the TikTok moms? <laughs> I do. Okay. Listen, it's all fun and games on TikTok. I hate the things with children in it. It really is a bummer. Wait, I didn't know this one involved children. I, I know she is a mom, but... Yeah, it does involve children. Oh my God. Ironically, she... And her little group, um, we're talking about, what's her name? Frankie, it's three names. Taylor Frankie Paul is her name. Taylor Frankie Paul. Ironically, her and her uh, fellow Mormon swingers, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this story, I am not really, but it was actually the topic that inspired this entire podcast. Was it? Pretty much. It was like, that was kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back that I'm like, oh my God, there's so much weird shit going on. We should talk about it. Oh, I know we had mentioned her, but I didn't know how in depth, because I feel like back then, one, it was like, kind of speculation, but two, I felt like it was a troll on her behalf. Like I felt like she was just using it because if you guys don't know, Taylor Frankie Paul is not only just a TikToker, but she's one of those Mormon Utah and it, all of that is relevant. It's not just like random information, but like she is a Mormon mom TikToker from Utah. And she used to hang out with all those like ridiculously like pretty people, <laughs> like people who just are gorgeous. It's, it's like a, I think that's it's their like thing. It's like a group of... <laughs> 
I'm not going to say cult, but I'm like, it's like a group of very yeah. young, attractive Mormons that all kind of moved to the same area and all have kids really young too. So it's a bunch of like, yes. I mean, how old is she? I, they're probably all like 25. No, she has to be like, she gives me 30 vibes. I honestly don't even know what she looks like and don't know anything about this entire story. Oh, I just perfect. knew the basis was that she and her fellow Mormons were in like a, they were all swingers. <laughs> which feels very unmormon. Yeah, she is just to me always struck me as I don't know, like she's the mom that people make fun of when they're saying that like those moms on TikTok are always just dancing like in front of like tragedy. Like remember that mom on TikTok that was dancing in front of her kid who had RSV? And she's like, my son has RSV with like TikTok like captions explaining it. And then she was like, I'm sorry. I really was sad that he had RSV. And it were, it's just not, like, it feels like Black Mirror. Oh my God. Stop dancing. Like if you're trying to explain something, don't dance. Unless it's like maybe a sad interpretive dance. And don't use like text graphics on screen. Maybe just say It's it. so wildly like unacceptable, like on a human level. Like it's just like, we don't do that. Like, what are you, what are you doing? So she's part of that group of moms. That mom actually who did that, who danced in front of her child who had RSV, who was like a newborn, by the way, which is like, it's super scary for a child period to have it. But a newborn, oh my God. Um, she's also a Mormon who lives in Utah. What is it with these Mormons who live in Utah? Oh my goodness. Does anybody know why do so many Mormons live in Utah? You know what? I'm going to Google it. There has to be a reason because it genuinely is a, like it's a whole community there and almost everybody's Mormon. Um, I would assume something with their religion, like if the church started there or... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it says, The Mormons, as they were commonly known, had moved west to escape religious discrimination. After the murder of founder and prophet Joseph Smith, they knew they had to leave their old settlement in Illinois, and many died in the harsh cold winter months as they made it over the Rockies to Utah. Interesting. <laughs> so I don't know why they chose Utah, but um, related questions. What percentage of Utah is Mormon? Oh my God, are you joking? I'm telling you, it's like 100, right? 66%. Okay, that's less than I thought. That's crazy. Yeah, it's like almost everybody's Mormon there. Oh my God. Well, I mean, how many people are in Utah? A lot. It's really big and whatnot. Yeah, but isn't gonna look spread out? And not important. Anyway, continue with this Frankie person. Yeah, so there's a whole group of Mormon moms on TikTok. Super random, right? But you would assume like something you relate Mormons to, like just when your head is just thinking, it's definitely like not swingers, right? Like you wouldn't genuine, like that's not a general thought when you're thinking Mormons. I feel like religion in general, I feel like is like husband and wife traditional. Yeah, I mean, that's like the foundation, right? Quote unquote. But if you ask me, someone who's not particularly religious i'm not gonna like clutch my pearls at it like to me i'm like oh yeah that makes sense you know what i mean like in my head i'm thinking like oh totally they do that i think it's way more common than people think oh 100 so in order to understand this it's kind of a little convoluted we got to go all the way back right so she was married to a guy named tate okay like tater tot like andrew tate but not him not him god not him tate was her ex-husband and they had two children together one of them who looks like damon salvatore she would make a bunch of tiktoks about that because your son really does look like him like not anymore that much but when he was little but i don't want to show people because i feel like that's weird to show her kid uh that's kind of but he looks a little bit more like him in in like tiktoks he looks like a baby oh uh, well but whatever anyway so they had two children together that's the point and they say, well, Taylor says that all of that friend group, essentially, like we would always see them film TikToks together and see the husbands together and all that stuff. She says that behind the scenes, they were all hooking up with each other. Everybody was hooking up with each other's spouse, like full on swinger motion, all that stuff, right? She volunteered this information? Oh yeah, yeah, she's very, I have to give it to her. She's very honest. Like she'll literally just like fucking blurt out anything at any given time. One day she just started posting TikToks alluding to the fact that she was like getting a divorce and that things kind of went wrong, right? And everyone's like, what the fuck? You have like two kids and it was just weird and it was out of the blue. Then she started outing the fact that like it was a swinger situation and then that blew up. But she did so in a very trolling way Way, right so she I want to show you one of the TikToks that she made when someone was asking her what the like custody situation was going to look like with the kids right like they were like what, what's that going to look like okay are you kidding so what, she's what, that, uh, that's real yeah no that's real she, I remember seeing this when it was still on her page like both 50 50 split three days on three days off while she's like shaking her ass like that's pretty bizarre right that's pretty hardcore I, I I'm so blown away like that has to be extensions right oh 
Yeah, Fuck. girl, that's what you're blown away by? I literally, there's a lot of things, but like that was the first. Well, yeah. So she, like when I saw these, because I saw these, of course, in real time, I saw it while it was happening. It was still on her page. They're not yeah. any longer. And I was like, okay, she's obviously trolling. Like you don't get a divorce and like in the midst of it, do this. Like it's just a bit too much. Yeah, yeah. And it kind of seems like she's trolling. Like she is doing, it doesn't seem like she's like yes. actually being like, look at this cute dance. Like, you know, like she seems like she's a little over the top. I thought because of, TikToks, many TikToks like this. It wasn't just this one. I thought like, okay, the whole thing's a lie. Like they're not really swingers. Like she's just eating shit. Like she's probably still with her husband. That's okay. what I thought. Like I thought all of it was fake. But she explained, actually kind of recently, she went on this podcast and explained why she got divorced. We were, we just had a, party one night and we threw a cabin party. I had been wanting to drink and drinking was a, an issue between Tay and I because he was like, absolutely no. That was like a no for him. So I, you know, was clean for most of our marriage. And at the very end, I started to ask like, I just want to be free. Like, can I have a drink here and there? And he was like, sure. So he let me have that. We went to a party. I was drinking. And then that was the first night he ever got intoxicated. So he at 28, I think at the time, that was his first, you know, time ever. And so I get there, I take I'm taking shots like no other. We were partying, like we were getting hammered drunk. There's a reason we were doing all this. I think some of us were miserable. I black out. So I don't remember much. I just remember fighting with Tate about something. And I was like, I'm going to a friend's house. Like I just need space. I have Tate and then the men in the friend group are like calling me. Um, One of them's like, hey, can I come pick you up? So he comes and picks me up and that's the night I mess up. You were already pretty plastered drunk that yeah. night. Yeah, like I can remember very few bits and pieces like of it, but I, I do remember like I, I wouldn't deny, right, that that happened. I'll never forget that day. It was the most, I think, one of a traumatic day for me. Like, I saw the look in his eyes and, like, to betray, like, not only my husband, but he was, like, my best friend. It hurt me to see that hurt in him. Question, question, question. Yeah. Um. So the friend came and picked her up and then they hooked up? So I believe, so yes. So was the friend sober? That's a really good question. I doubt it because the way she describes it is like it was a drinking it was thing. Like everyone. Yeah, but also if he drove to pick her up, there's like a lot of questions I have that are like That was it. I was like, "Oh my god, wait, did he that feels Yeah, weird. for sure. I think that there's more clarification. I know that's like a full podcast episode and honestly, I tried to sit through it. But like I don't know enough about her. Again, it's like the Vanderpump Rules thing. Like I'm just not invested. So like I I I couldn't do it. But they were allowed to hook up with each other under specific circumstances from the way she explains it. But not in the circumstances that she did. Yes, because from what it sounds like, she got into a fight with her husband, separated from her husband, like physically, like, hey, I'm going elsewhere. And then while she yeah. was like behind her husband's back, hooked up with someone that, yes, she would have been allowed to hook up with if it was like in front of her husband type of shit. So that is apparently why they got divorced, right? And it's really sad because there's two kids involved. And that they're putting it all over the internet. It's embarrassing. It really is. And honestly, listen, if you want to swing, do you, boo-boo? But I have personally, like, I'm on Swing Talk. I mean, I'm not on it, but, like, I, I'm a viewer on sw on Swing Talk. That's a thing? What kind of content is it? Oh, my God. It's just swingers, right? I mean, not, like, you know, not, like, fucking. <laughs> I, was say, I feel like TikTok's d too strict for that. Usually they go, like, the way I discover them is, like, on live. So they'll be on live, like, answering questions about swinging and oh whatnot. God, TikTok lives are the weirdest shit. They I, like, are. I pass some stuff and I'm like, what is Going Dude, on. seriously, it's it gets really fucking wild on TikTok Live, and my algorithm is just like it doesn't help. Like it just feeds me the weirdest shit. But anyway, so I found a bunch of like swingers through that, and I have seen like there was this one swinger couple. It was Misty, Matt, Mark, and um, Christina. If you know Swing Talk, you fucking know those four. They were each married, right? So it was Mark and Misty were married. Christina and Matt, no. Christina and Matt. <laughs> See, how do they keep up with this? Christina and Mark were married. Misty and Matt were married for decades. They have like teenage children, but they were swingers like later on in their marriage. So they go and they swing whatever, but they all find each other. They say, oh my God, we don't want to swing anymore. We want to be a polyamorous couple. The four of them? All four of them. So they would like, one spouse was obsessed with the other spouse and that it was just like a weird crossover. I saw them on lives and in real time, saw them all get divorces, hate each other, scream, cry on lives. It was the most chaotic 
sick shit I've ever fucking seen in my life. These are grown adults who have been married for decades. Well, if you want to swing, that's but fine. But it seems like things be get careful. a little messy. I think polyamory and all that stuff, that's totally fine. I just think it takes like trust. And I think it takes like a very solid understanding of what the boundaries are. And I think it's just a specific kind of person. Like some people are down with it and some people aren't. And I think it's totally like there's something wrong with it. And some it. people think they're down with it and then they're faced with it. And they're I like, oh, think no. that that is the case a lot of the time. <laughs> but anyway, so that happened with them, right? Then she gets with this guy named Dakota who looks a lot like Tate. TBH, but whatever. That, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Mormon, Utah. Uh, it's Utah. Apparently, back in December, her and Dakota break up, and he put, uh, this is not like important to the story, but he posted this TikTok, and the second hand embarrassment I got, I could not. Oh, God. Dakota has now spoken out regarding him and Taylor's breakup. He posted this TikTok, which reads, when you don't just lose one, but three of them at once. He responds with this comment that reads, literally what breaks me the most, love those kids more than anything. <laughs> oh my god i mean like that's that, I, that's very sad because he's referring to the kids in it but like what the fuck can someone check his pulse i think he might have passed away like i wish we could see the full clip where he gets up after to turn the camera off <laughs> how many takes did this take i just can't i honestly could not i had to show it it was too good but anyway so they're obviously very cringe meant for each other somewhat yeah, i was gonna say they all make great content yeah exactly but they eventually got back together. So this was a couple months ago. So December, end of last year. We're still in the beginning of this year. They get back together. That TikTok changed her mind. Jesus, can you imagine? If I saw that, the ick I would get would be irredeemable. Right? I'm like, you got back together after that? <laughs> so embarrassing. But they got back together. And then I want to say about a week ago or a week and a half ago, it was all over TikTok that she had been arrested. All they knew was that there was a report and a mugshot. And, and I know nothing about why. So I'm so curious to see how this plot has uh, progressed. Unfortunately, it's really not like haha -ha funny. It's it's pretty fucked. Like this situation is really messy. So basically, let's uh, read from this article because it kind of summarizes it pretty well. The charges stem from a report of domestic violence on February 17th when Taylor Frankie Paul's boyfriend called the police and said that she had been hitting him in the presence of her children. So there, she has two young children. This is Dakota? This is Dakota, yeah. So Dakota's calling the police saying she's hitting me. She's like being belligerent. Was it in public? No. So it was at someone's house. So they were at a Galentine's thing, right? There's like before the madness, there's like a picture of them all together, all her friends and Dakota and all that stuff where you had to dress as your type. You know those parties? No. You like dress as your type. So she dressed as like a douchebag. Yeah, it was like pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, exactly. But, but um, so it was supposed to be like a fun Valentine's themed thing from, with friends and all that shit. I don't know why her kids were there. That's, you know, whatever. But they got really fucking belligerent and she got really angry and started screaming and throwing shit and hitting Dakota, who was her boyfriend. Apparently, they say that she threw her phone and a wooden play set at the man, which is like, what, like a pickler triangle? Like, I'm trying to envision what the fuck. There's how, you know what a pickler triangle is? I, I don't, but I'm thinking like blocks. Uh, no, no, a pickler triangle is like this big, it's a structured thing, like a wooden fucking like a, thing. Like a small home. <laughs> like a small, <laughs> it's not funny, but yes. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> and it says that she caused damage to his vehicle from throwing this oh. play set. I thought that this was just at him, not at his vehicle. No. So it says, video of the altercation of Obtained by police also indicates Paul threw heavy metal chairs, quote unquote, at the man that put holes in a wall as well as kicked him and put him in a chokehold. <sighs> What? She does not. I'm sorry. I'm not actually laughing. I just like don't know how to react to this. Um, she didn't look like a very large person. Like, but you don't have to be. Have hole? you ever seen a belligerent individual? Like, oh no, I could see her like getting scrappy, but like putting him in a chokehold. Like, it I does just... get worse. Um, because then the kids start getting involved. Not just that they're witnessing it, but oh, they actually God. get hurt. Going back to what she had said earlier about like her husband didn't drink, and like the first time he ever got drunk, he was like 28, and that she didn't drink a lot, so she got blacked out. They're probably like, I feel like they have like the, the vibes of college students that like don't know how to drink yet. And they're actually like 30 and have kids. Oh, a, a hundred percent. That's what's happening. And that's the problem too with suppression and with all of these like dumb ass rules that put people in these situations where they can't explore their boundaries in life in general. And fuck alcohol. Like I'm not even just talking about alcohol because not everybody wants to drink in their life and that's fine. But like there's so many things in life that people deem as bad because of religion 
religion, because of society, because of whatever, that if you don't explore it, by the time you do explore it, you just don't even know what to do with it. Like you just go fucking crazy. Well, I mean, speaking from experience, going to ASU, I had drank in high school. Like I started drinking when I was like 16, we started going to parties. And it wasn't like all the time. It wasn't like a problem. But when I got to school in Arizona, it was like, oh. <laughs> People really right? drink here. But like I had had my practice. So like, yeah, I had some bad nights and bad, a lot of bad mornings, but um, I was okay. There were people that did not drink in high school that then went to Arizona State and it didn't go well. It's literally dangerous to not know what to do with something as crazy as like alcohol and drugs and shit like that. And especially like when you have like younger kids experimenting, they're probably like in someone's parents' house that are out of town or something. This, they're like, I like have seen people out in public that like literally have absolutely no idea how to hold their alcohol. And as fully grown adults, less people are gonna interfere and try and tell them what to do. And things get messy. Yes, for sure. I, I think that's a really good point. And I'm not telling like everyone out there, let your like 12 year old kids drink. No, no, I, that, that was not that was not the moral of that story. Um, It kind of was, I'll, <laughs> I mean, a little bit. I mean, but, I mean, do it. But just, I mean, my mom wasn't like, yeah, here's a handle. But like, same. she knew maybe some stuff was going on and wasn't gonna like totally like ground me for life. Yeah, I got, I started drinking really young because I started exploring guess where I first had my first drink? I Where? On a cruise, sister. <laughs> of course it was. It was a Long Island iced tea. My brother had left like half a glass of Long Island iced tea. I was 12 years old. I grabbed oh it, God. I drank it, and I remember running through the hall saying, my head's so heavy, my head's so heavy. Like I was so, I was accidentally drunk. I don't know if I knew it was alcohol or if I just thought it was like juice. Oh my God, that would be so confusing. I was confused, but I was also like low-key living. Like I was like, yeah, whatever this is sign me up for more it definitely is like a learning curve it's not like you can just like casually start getting drunk well i've literally said this so many times but like i okay when i first started drinking any movement my body wanted to make i would just do it so like i would just do the most out of pocket shit because i'm like head says this Head says that. Like, and I would just start doing it and like rolling on the grass. Like it was so embarrassing. I needed to know like, okay, my brain's loose. My body doesn't need to be loose. You know what I'm saying? Got to keep it tight. I've always been very, very lucky that one, I think before I'd ever get to the point of being so drunk that I'm doing like such stupid shit, I usually am like getting sick. I have a, an interesting relationship with alcohol and my stomach doesn't go that well. So yeah. I would like get sick or something before I could get that drunk that I would be doing things that were, I don't know. And I just like trust my blacked out self. Like I just never really did anything. I've only blacked crazy. out. Like one time, like literally like where what? I black out and wake up only one time. I could not count. <gasps> Are you serious? It was so scary for me. I was like, I hate that feeling. Well, no, but that's the thing is a lot of people it is for me. I was like, what's the worst I could have done? And honestly, there was never anything bad because I usually went home before anything got too bad. But oh my God, only once? Only one time. Every other time that I've like thrown up or been really sick because of alcohol, I've been like completely aware. Like if I need to throw up, even when I was blacked out, I went to the toilet. Like I'm very, very like- Same. I like to be in control. I don't like to feel out I'm of a control. very composed blackout because like I've had friends that slept over. They'll say that they like told me something last night. And I'm like, I told you that story last night. I'm like, I do not remember anything. And they're like, no, you were fine. You were talking to me. And I was like, no, no, no. I'm aware, but um, I, no one was home. The lights were on and I was not there. My sister-in-law blacks out and you could literally like see the, like the light is gone. Like there's nobody home for real. For me, that doesn't happen, I guess. Like no one else can tell. Oh, I could tell one. <laughs> I mean, it gets to a certain point. I'm sure people could tell. The last thing I'll say is that I know that for a lot of people blacking out, it's like once it does happen once, it happens much easier than, what's it called, the shampoo effect? Shampoo? You never heard that? Where it's like, if you have leftover shampoo, like it suds up really easy. I've never heard that in my whole life. It's a weird saying. But anyway, the idea is that once you black out once, it's easier to black out again. And so I didn't have to be completely belligerent to be blacked out. Like I would just not remember. I'd wake up and I'd be like, how did we get home? Oh, that's terrifying. <laughs> and like, no. sometimes it would be like someone would tell me and I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes people would tell me and I'd be like, 
what? I'm not going to be able to write you like a detailed story about like every element of what happened the night before. But at no point am I like, what? Like I was not in this. Like it was only one time and that was terrifying to me. I hate not feeling like I'm in control. But we went on a bit of a tangent, my bad. When we draw back to this, you're absolutely right. They are going through their college, high school, whatever fucking phase. You guys know if you've been through the phase, what the phase is. Me personally, I am very much not an angry drunk. Like it has never been a thing that I used to like mask my problems or like numb my feelings or anything. So nothing really comes out when I'm drunk. But a lot of people, that is what happens. It's only Scorpios. <laughs> Wait, what? I know it's like dumb maybe to make a generalization like that, but every Scorpio ever, I mean, maybe if you're like severely emotionally healed. L look up, look up her birthday. Oh, that's actually a really good fucking idea. Hold Cause on. I mean, think of like people in college, they're out partying for fun. They don't really have that many work. Like we didn't have a care in the world. It was just like, where are we gonna go out tonight? No, she's a Gemini, which honestly, yeah. Yeah, that, that checks out too. But the thing is with Scorpios is that Scorpios in particular- Scorpios and Geminis. <laughs> no, no, but like I'm talking, if you know a Scorpio out there and you get drunk with them, you know what the fuck I'm talking about because they're so like, they're like little hermits, right? Cause they're like, crabs oh and they just like don't talk about their yeah and when they drink it is floodgates like you've never seen before it's literally disturbing and you're always like you need to relax if someone is gonna escalate to like throwing metal chairs and throwing things that are caught like you have some underlying issues oh, 100%. clearly that you are trying to mask and she even said like we were all miserable and like trying to and she actually like she'll always on tiktok like show her like extremely messy house like it's really bad and we'll be like you know i'm a fuck she says it. she's like i'm a hot mess like i'm a disaster whatever and I think that she was a young parent I think that because of her religion I don't know for sure but I think there was a lot of suppression going on and yeah I think if you get to the point where you're fucking throwing shit in front of your children you're very far gone like you need help and then you combine that with the fact that she's in the drinking state of a college student but with the baggage of a fully grown adult with children and this is how things played out yeah so it gets even worse like I said and then it starts oh involving God. the children so a uh, trigger warning for kind of children getting hurt and being in a very toxic situation Situation. It says here that the man who is uh, Dakota, her boyfriend, told Paul to stop throwing chairs because her five-year-old daughter was next to him on the couch, but she then threw another chair, which struck the child on the head, the footage indicates. So this was all filmed. This has not been released. So like, thank God the footage is not out there. The girl, who is her daughter, um, was heard crying after being hit the police said. And a detective oh was later informed that the child had a painful goose egg injury to her head, court documents state. Um, it says in the video, the man could be heard telling Paul multiple times to stop hitting him and an officer arrived to witness Paul striking her boyfriend. The man told police that he was scared for his life and officers observed that he had redness and swelling around his eyes, swelling on his elbows and scratches on his hands and neck. Oh my God. <laughs> Also, I want to revisit earlier when I was like, how big is she? I wasn't trying to be like, women can't abuse men or anything like oh, that. Oh, they can. Definitely didn't yeah. mean that. That absolutely valid. I think she could fuck him up if she wanted. I was just kind of trying to envision it because- Well, it is shocking. Yeah. She I mean, does it, seem like a very small person. It says, Paul later admitted to police that she had thrown metal chairs and the wooden playset, and she was charged with a felony count of aggravated assault, two felony counts of domestic violence in the presence of a child, along with one misdemeanor count each of child abuse and criminal mischief. So that is the charges that came out. She's scheduled to appear in court March 21st, so next month, or this month, I guess. People were wondering what now, like what the fuck is going on? Dakota, who was her boyfriend, definitely gave the vibe, like people would comment on his TikTok, where's Taylor? And he would put, I don't know. Like he was definitely giving the vibe of like, I'm done with her. I mean, I'd get the fuck out of there. Like, are you kidding? Until recently. Oh no. Yeah, until recently they were spotted together on Instagram, on her Instagram. I also believe that Dakota, I, I don't know enough of the lore of them because I haven't been around, but a lot of people, there's a lot of talks on Reddit and stuff about him being a, like a recovering addict of some sort. Oh my so God. that's another layer of holy shit. Taylor and Dakota appeared together on social media for the first time today. Taylor's mom shared this picture to Instagram. It looks like everyone had gone together for this baby's blessing. Taylor had also shared this picture to her Instagram story today. I am no expert when it comes to legal stuff, but I'm pretty sure in a DV case, you're not supposed to see the other person who is in- I didn't even think about that. Yeah, the main thing people were saying when they saw that they were back together or whatever this is, was what the fuck? Like, this is a domestic violence case. I'm thinking back to, this is so random, but 
I feel like it was like a Love Island host or something like that. There was some kind of couple in the public sphere, some couple that there was a domestic violence thing and they were technically still together, but they weren't allowed to see each other because there was an ongoing court situation. They like had put out statements and stuff about like how they didn't want any hate towards the other person and all this stuff, but they weren't physically together. I don't know about domestic violence as a whole. I do know that when something is reported, I believe believe it is just up to the state or like the detectives and the prosecutors and things like that to like further you know do the charges and stuff and pursue yeah yeah because even the one i'm thinking about it was like they wanted they were okay with each other they like didn't necessarily and that happens a lot you see it a lot with like marriages and people who have children together where they're like a dispute happens they have to call the cops because it's really bad but then when the cops come they're like no i don't want them to get in trouble you know so that does happen a lot yeah, yeah, yeah. but this here's the thing there's multiple layers to this i think that number one she's automatically getting not that people aren't publicly scrutinizing her because they are but a lot of people are giving her grace and I think it's because she's a woman. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, like call it for what it is. If a man did this shit, like, come on. Like we have to fucking hold everyone accountable for shit like this. Well, that's, I'm curious, like, does she still have her kids? Well, I, I'm not sure about that because actually I am kind of sure about that. So I did see on another TikTok, <laughs> I don't know why I, I, I speak before I think. I did see on another TikTok where the girlfriend of her ex-husband said that they do have the kids currently, but that they, they do want her to get custody like back essentially. So she does not currently have custody of her kids, but it is something that like, they're just waiting for her to get help essentially. Although I just said what I said about like, yeah, if this was a man, like we would be on their ass. I do also sympathize with the fact that this could very well be a rock bottom, bottom of the barrel scenario for her. That was like maybe the ultimate like wake up call. I'm hoping that's what it is for her. Yeah, well, that's why I even said when you were, said they were back together, I was like, I hope she stopped drinking. Exactly. Because it seems like that was obviously the catalyst that, I mean, she it's that she had a lot of things pent up combined with an inexperience with alcohol. I just personally, um, the thing with the children, like that's that. not like, even if that's part of your rock bottom, a perfect example. I was just downstairs with my husband and we just talk loud. Like we're not fighting. We're literally just talking loud like to each other. And my son, sometimes because we talk so loud, he'll think we're fighting. And he'll literally be like, no, no, like go to us and like be like kind of distraught. And we, we look at him, we're like, buddy, we're not like nobody's fighting and he never sees us fight. But like kids are so sensitive to that. And that breaks my fucking heart that like they weren't just fighting. They saw their mom like absolutely just break down. And like that safety blanket like we talked about where kids trust you with their world was like ripped off of them, you know? So it's like, yes, that could be your rock bottom. And I hope that's what it is. Uh, I can relate to that because I grew up with an alcoholic father and he passed away from alcoholism when I was 15. And he thankfully was never abusive. So I never even had that element of it, but it definitely like seeing your parents in an altered state is definitely something that sticks with you. I just like... Back to even what I was saying earlier that like, I trust myself when I black out them. Like, I'm not gonna do anything that, like I'm gonna go home before I would have done anything too bad. The fact that she was throwing furniture towards her child, I can't, um, like y y there should not be a drunk that you can get to be able to do that. That's interesting that you brought that up, the, the altered state thing. Like, did you feel like as a whole that felt like you couldn't put actual trust into your parent like you should have been able to like did you feel like I can't like really depend on this person because they're they're not in the right state of mind sadly I'm like I'm like Ugh. do you want the real answer yeah I think it was actually like choosing to overlook it a lot of the time and be like well I know what's happened before but like he won't do it this time but like in eighth grade, we got in a car accident because he picked me up from my friend's house after basketball practice. He was supposed to pick us mm. up from basketball practice. He didn't. My friend's dad did. And I thought that was weird already. And he was like, your dad's going to pick you up from our place. And I was like, okay. And then I get there and I like could tell he was acting kind of weird. And also like, I mean, in eighth grade, I knew what being drunk was. But like leading up to that, I think that's also a thing is that like as a kid, you don't really know what's happening. So you're just kind of like, confused. I got in the car and knew that something was up 
Like yeah. he was being weird, but I was just like in denial and being like, oh my God, everything's fine. It'll be fine. And it was not fine. But like as the parent, like you want to trust them. So I always gave him, like the older I got, there was times that I would like challenge him and be like, no, I'm not getting in the car. But oh my God, yeah. <laughs> there were times when I was in eighth grade that I was like, yeah, it's fine. Have you ever said, I, I mean, I know this, but have you ever like said this on the internet? I don't like remember you ever like talking about your dad on the internet. Um, little bits like at, there's a I think there's a video on my channel that was um it was like reacting to assumptions of me yeah and it was I I had a perfect childhood or something I was like oh mm. my god but I think that's like I think it's really great insight though into a situation like this because it kind of gives hope in a in a weird way because obviously it's fucked like the whole situation's fucked and it should have never happened but in a weird way maybe they're young enough to still bounce back like still have trust for their parents you know how old are the kids i know her son can't be like he's probably two and that daughter has to be like four or five so they're yeah. they're really young i mean i'm no expert on psychology and how like I trauma know. manifests yeah. but absolutely like i definitely feel like the first memories of anything weird going on i was like seven okay and i think that's when it got bad but i think that there was probably stuff before then yeah. And I just was oblivious. But again, he was not physically abusive. And like, I don't think him and my mom were like fighting openly until I was older. Yeah, I think that too, the, the physical element of it, although obviously Taylor, from what we're seeing from court documents and stuff, didn't mean to hit her daughter. The fact that she yeah. did, I never really got like hit a bunch as a kid. But like, I think I might have like twice and it might have been like a slap on the mouth. And I remember oh, them yeah. so vividly like when i tell you that i remember the betrayal the feeling of like oh my god i cannot believe this person that i trust with ever and like i'm not traumatized from it but like i, I mean maybe i am because i remember it so vividly but like you know it's just like it's this feeling of like i'm hurt because of my parents it makes me so sad because also like you think after it happened she was such a drunk mess like i, I doubt she immediately ran over Comforting. to apologize or something i know so like Ugh. The, oh my like, it's so icky like it. feel it. yeah it, it does feel really really shitty if this happened to me i'm just looking at it if i was separated from my husband and he did this to my kids it's not that i don't want her to get custody back of her kids i just really 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 hope that she seeks the proper help i hope she goes to rehab i hope she does whatever and i'm not even talking just i'm not even saying she has like necessarily for sure an alcohol problem obviously i think she does but i can't say from like one off like again i don't know if she's in her college stage right now exactly that entire tangent could have been completely irrelevant but um i don't know i'm i'm just so curious like afterwards was she like completely mortified because it, has she ever given the idea that she's like not a good mom no no i i don't think she like as far as i have heard there's not like a, ever been a parenting question for her other than not like a pattern of behavior yeah other than she like shows her kids and you know people have an issue with that but like other than that i don't think there's been like that mom who danced in front of her kid with rsv like there's never been like a oh my god you're so like disconnected and, and aloof but i just hope that whatever help she needs probably mental help like that she just gets it. Well, that's the thing. I was like, I don't even think it's probably like an alcoholism, like I need to drink. It's like, if she doesn't drink that much, then the problem is that when she does, it's out of control because she doesn't know how to handle it. So it's like, if she could just cut it out completely, then fine. But it's that she needs to go to therapy and figure out what is causing her to blow up when she is drunk. Yeah, and what exactly. It's that caging of everything that it's like these floodgates open up. And at the end of the day, Yes, I think she should be like she should face consequences for this. Absolutely. Yes. Like it's fucked yeah. up and not okay. But I don't think necessarily putting her in jail would be the most beneficial of things for anyone because it does feel like a situation where clearly she was in an altered state of mind and that's not an excuse at all but it does if it was like a one off kind of thing do you feel like we're giving her because i kind of feel like we're we're giving her a little bit way uh not a little bit like way more grace than we would give like again like a man like if a man got drunk and like hit a kid by accident and was like beating the shit out of his partner we'd be like yeah he should serve jail time like but, that, that what I the fuck know. if you told me though that the guy like didn't usually drink and like has never had any kind of pattern of this behavior before and it was like a random you know what it's not just i think there's a broader conversation too when you take even gender out of it how many people are sent to jail when they have mental health issues. Where it's like, jail's not gonna fix it, therapy will. <laughs> yeah, I see that. I think there's a lot of men in prison 
as well as women in prison who would benefit from mental help versus being in fucking prison. Being locked in a box isn't gonna fix it. Like, I get that there's like, yeah, we want to punish them, but it feels like there should be ways to do that that also help rehabilitate them. Yeah, that makes sense, because I literally, like, I feel like if I don't leave my house for a certain amount of days, I literally go insane. And I'm like, how are you gonna get a person that's like, not well, then they go to jail and a lot of times don't have access to the medication they need to be taking. And then it's like, oh, and they're not gonna get the mental health attention that they need. And they're gonna have 10 times more issues because they're in fucking jail. Yeah, it's it, you, that's a really good point. And I think that I just wanted to make sure that like we weren't being too easy on her because she is a pretty woman you know she's a pretty white woman and like sometimes our brain goes to like that immediate like well maybe she was just you know whatever i wanted to make sure that it's like if this would have been anybody else of any gender color anything we would still be having the same opinion i can't say that 100 percent and uh, like i hope that i would have the same opinion and i think i do have that general opinion about prison yeah. and jail in, in general me too but, like if they did something super fucked up like they should not they're not gonna add any value to society anymore and we need them away from normal people yeah you could say andrew tate lily you could just say his name I, girl okay. oh my god are we done with this topic? we are is we that, are but uh, i have a quick andrew tate comment oh good god yes please i don't know if you guys heard but he's still in jail in romania is he in romania Right now? Yeah. His lawyer's been trying to get him out since day one. But the most recent attempt, um, after, of course, it was like, to be reunited with his children. <laughs> he needs oh, to be a dad. I'm like, uh, have you watched any of his videos? Because that does not line up. <laughs> but it was now most recently that there's like documentation suggesting that he might have cancer. There was like some spot on his lung. He like was asking to be uh, released to go to Dubai to go get further testing or something. The only place where testing is done, as you oh know. Oh my God. Okay, so that was my first reaction. It was like, if someone has cancer in jail, they're not gonna be like, sorry. No chemo <laughs> like, here. Might not be your first choice of doctors, but like they wouldn't just ignore it. Like I, I'm confused why he would have to leave to go get diagnosed, not even get treatment. It has come out since then that he even said that it was like, he got testing done and it was benign, so he's fine. But also someone had said like, or pointed out that video that allegedly, I mean, not really, that Greta got him caught with the pizza when he was sitting at the table. Yes. He was smoking a cigar in it. Like up until he got arrested, he didn't seem like he was too concerned about his lungs. Don't you dare tell that to my husband. He is severely convinced that cigars have nothing to do with anything cigarettes have stuff to do with. Oh my God. Well, does he do Posh Mama's lung cleanse? <laughs> yeah, don't worry. He'd be drinking the onion juice pictures or whatever the hell that lady's doing. No, but wait, people a few times have tweeted me like recently saying, are you covering the Posh Mama stuff? She unalived someone's dad and now they're speaking out about it. And I'm like, didn't we already do that? The girl does post- like nothing else happened, right? No, they just like, they go back and forth on TikTok usually. No, no, we already broke that. Like we cracked that case. Don't worry about that. Yeah, I was like, oh my God, she killed someone else? No, no, <laughs> no. no it's not even funny, oh my God. Honestly though, that was one of our like more underperformers of a video. So maybe that's why you haven't seen it, but we did already cover Posh Mama. And that is quite, I it's love that episode. TikTok deep dive. That was quite the journey. I lit, I'm not joking. Almost every night to Joey, I will go, these are all my natural teeth. <sighs> Literally, like every fucking night. So like, uh, Posh Mom was part of my every day. And I do oil pull now. Oh, With God. Guru Nanda's oil pulling, it's kind of fire. Well, it'll reverse any of your cavities. <laughs> my teeth are pretty white now. Okay, so we have um, an update on Hailey Bieber and Justin Bieber. Oh my God, stop being so rude. You know people are like all calling her Hailey Baldwin now? No, they, they've, they've taken away way. Bieber. They just said, you're not married anymore. I mean, it's better than Goldberg. We have to be honest though, the situation has gone a little too far, has it not? Yeah, things, you would think maybe they would have started to like die down, but it feels like they've just been like full steam ahead and no one's saying anything. So it's just like people being mean and um, speculating more. So Justin and Haley have both been silent, I guess other than Haley saying that her original TikTok was like not, throwing shade at anyone. Justin has stayed silent through this whole thing and everyone has been very critical about that, which like I would be losing my shit if my husband was just like not saying anything. Also on top of not saying anything, I guess she posted, I haven't looked recently to see if it's still the case, but she like posted a birthday Instagram for him. Oh right, I saw that. And he didn't like or comment on it. 
<laughs> Brings me back to uh, Do We Know Them. I mean, not Do We Know Them. What's the movie called? Don't Worry Darling. <laughs> oh my God. I know. Yeah, absolutely. That is not that weird, but like maybe it's like... Maybe he was busy. It's just one more thing for people to add to their list of things. Uh, they're like ammo to why... I saw people like uh, on the surface, obviously it looks like who fucking cares. But if you're getting fucking boiled alive publicly, it's like, like my fucking shit and comment that you love me eternally, bitch. The way I would steal Nassim phone like while he's in the shower just to do it myself like i'll be like absolutely not motherfucker honestly like, no. i'm surprised that she did it literally not only did then he not comment on her stuff but then he had a birthday party and he uploaded these pictures oh lord i don't know there might be it could have just randomly selected them so there's no order but can scroll through. There's a few posts, but the only ones of Haley are him just being oh so my God. uninterested. <gasps> Why would he? Do Why would you even post that? At a time like this, this looks like a, a, a reminiscent of when she was lurking in the background of Selena Gomez's date, where it's like, what? Ariana, what are you doing here? Like, now why are you just walking in front of the picture? This literally looks like she just happened to be walking in front of the picture. All I could think about was like, I was just imagining them at this party and like just having a conversation with someone and then her just like coming up being like, what are you guys talking about? That's pretty accurate. Oh my God, I'm such a bitch. Because I was just about to go into why everyone's being too harsh, but so. I mean, but they are. Like, here's the thing, we can observe. It's the same thing with um, Angela Bassett did the thing. Where it's like, <laughs> listen, we can all observe things with our eyes without being fucking insane. Like, why yes, do you guys correct, have to fucking correct. tell people to go die? What is the purpose? Well, because they have this long list of evidence, add these to it. Um, Next, they have the party favor given out at Justin's birthday, which I'm not gonna lie. The first time this popped up on my Twitter feed, I was like, hmm, that's a little strange. This was the party favor he gave out. And it's a lighter that says, I'm so thankful that I didn't end up with what I thought I wanted. So naturally, given the recent events, people immediately were like, <gasps> Selena, you mean? This had to have been planned so far in advance. People have to understand that. Oh, well, not even that. Like, so when I first saw it, immediately my brain did make the connection. I was like, that's a little weird. Uh, that yeah. feels strange. But think about the fact, I'm like, why the fuck would he, they make the party favor of his, tw like he just turned 29. Why would just the party favor be like an ode to, Sel like, or a, it'd be, I guess, shade to Selena? That's just the stupidest, like when I first saw it, obviously my brain did go to like, oh, this is ob like, uh, it's a weird quote. It's very inconvenient. Yeah. But and it's also just my opinion, really ugly. I mean, honestly, I thought it was kind of even strange that he had party favors. I'm like, do people do that? I guess rich people do. Yeah. Like, what is this? A fucking wedding? Yeah. But um, like, you can give Jordan almonds in a little box. People thought this was, I guess, about Selena. I mean, it doesn't help. It doesn't help the case. And exactly. I was like, it's just one more thing that people have added to their list of evidence. I'm just going to be honest. If it was me personally, due to the circumstances and just knowing that that quote could be tied to something and knowing people were reaching, I'll be like, I would have nixed you the take lighter. party favors and you dump them in the nearest well. Same with like, why did you post those pictures? Why didn't you comment on any stuff? It's like, these are very obvious PR things. What and Yeah, are yeah. You doing? That's the thing. It's like, okay, it's a stretch to think this is about Selena, but what makes it even weirder is the fact that he did not X these party favors because <laughs> they could easily be seen as something for Selena. And like, I, it doesn't take a genius to know that, that people were gonna make that assumption. With how much, like people are leaping for anything. So it's just, it just don't put these out. It's very uh, unfortunate coincidences for Haley because yeah. Justin, I think is getting a little hate for like not speaking out, but honestly, no one's really cares. Everyone's just targeting their anger at Haley, which, is obvious if you scroll down to the end of the Google Doc. Justin, I guess, made a surprise, I don't know if it was a surprise appearance, planned appearance, but he came out during um, someone's set during uh, the Rolling Loud Festival. And apparently the entire crowd starts chanting, fuck Hailey Bieber. I'm 
I'm not gonna say, yeah, I am, because I'm sure it's probably 21 and older, or at least 18 and older, probably. Uh, grown adults? Really? I mean, they're probably literally off of, like, so much Molly, they don't even know where the fuck they are, but, like, holy shit. But then wouldn't you be positive? I don't know, right? <laughs> Aren't these things supposed to make you happy? Guys, listen, is it hilarious, some of the stuff, and, like, you know, we, we were joking about her being a lurker and all that stuff? Yes. This is like so fucked. I'm sorry. I don't see this as funny. I don't see this as necessary. Like this is like, guys, we can all kiki on the internet without taking it into real life. This is this man's wife. Whether you like it or not, he's going to go home and sleep next to the person that you're saying, fuck her, fuck her. Like that shit's foul. Like, I I'm sorry. I don't like this. I don't like when you think on a human level, again, we have to think on a human level because we all forget we're human fucking beings. Everybody forgets that people are people. This is so fucked. That's the thing. It's like, I, I think there's certain things like her being a, like a stan back in the day that it would be very uncomfortable for her to talk about, I'm sure. But I think if you really talked to her, she would at least understand why people, she would be like, yes, that is cringe. I understand that. Like she would be on the same page. She'd be like, yes, it sucks that everyone's attacking me for it, but I understand. Why are people saying, like, she didn't do anything. Well, they're they're like assuming too that like the whole narrative and, and, and what we've talked about too is that she does shade Selena. She does do whatever. That's not a fucking crime. Like, yeah, she was a super fan of them. And then she went and kind of started shading Selena, whatever. But at the end of the day, that is her current husband. Yeah, if she wants to be a salty bitch towards his ex, like, isn't that what people do sometimes? Like, I, I, like this is not, she didn't commit a crime. So this was my biggest problem it, that I read this. And I was like, oh God, what has happened? Oh, no. There are so many comments on most of Justin's stuff, I think, where it's like, Hashtag save Justin. Hashtag free Justin. But my favorite, we freed Britney. We can free you too. I hate it here. I hate it here. He's not in the conservatorship. What do you mean free him? What are you going to do? Off Haley? No, like, no, no, no. I don't, what are you talking about? Like, no one's holding him hostage. I mean, there could have been like a weird Hillsong kind of cult situation going on, but like, no one's holding him hostage. This, this is marriage. literally coming from someone who last episode did say that he should sleep with one eye open, but that was me kicking on the internet. It's not legitimate. Like, she's not, they're married. Like, obviously, he proposed to her, they're married. And he can go if he wants, and she could go if she wants. Guys, I just am like, what do you on. mean we can save you? What are you gonna do? Shame her into divorcing him so then he's free? Like, I don't understand the plan here. There's a lot of speculation that their marriage, because everyone says that he like doesn't actually love her and uh, they want to save him, that he apparently married her because he, since he got in legal trouble back in the day and he was a Canadian citizen, he needed someone to get his visa and his green card. So yeah, Justin Bieber couldn't find anyone else. It had to be Haley. <laughs> well, <laughs> not no, a no single one that he American yeah. woman would marry Justin Bieber for papers. Fuck out of here. Like, that. what That's is hilarious. dumb theory? Um, well, and that, that supposedly you have to be married for five years uh, for it to be... No, uh, no Which no. I don't think is a thing anyway. No. You would know. Uh, hello, someone who married someone who needs... Is a, now he's a U.S. resident, like a permanent resident, and then he's going to become a citizen. No, you don't need to be married for five years. To, to what? To become a citizen? I guess. I don't really know. Okay, okay, maybe the citizen thing, yeah. But the, like, you could get papers and stuff off of like immediately well, basically. Well, so then from. the idea is, um, or the theory is they've almost been married for five years now so that uh, he will become a citizen and then he will divorce her. And that that's why he's been staying so quiet is because he doesn't give a fuck. Oh. oh. <laughs> I'm literally coughing, dying, shitting, screaming, sliding down the wall. No, literally, I to me, that's hilarious. Because I feel like people too, when I married my husband, they're like, he just wants papers. I'm like, motherfucker, first of all, he hates it here. So that's number one. But number two, I like people think that like, everybody wants to be here. This is the greatest country in the world. It's like, he's from Canada. I want to go there. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, Haley probably wants the Canadian citizenship. <laughs> Literally. So, and also, it's Justin Bieber. Like, if anyone has some privilege to work in this situation like i don't think he needs to be married to like stay in you the don't. u.s so <laughs> like if he were to just invest some money into like a business per se and and that could be a reason he could stay in the states you he doesn't need to be fucking married to stay in this it's so I was gonna ridiculous. say his legal he's never done anything that bad like he i think the last thing he got it was um drag racing 
or something in Miami and he had some drugs in his system, but it wasn't like absolutely outrageous that like he didn't go to jail. Oh my God. Do you remember his deposition? I think in it, like his number one thing was like, what was it? Like, I don't recall or something, but he just kept hammering it. And I was like, man, what the fuck? Didn't he also pee in a bucket? I don't think he was arrested for it, but yes. Mm. And he spit on fans. <gasps> um, What? He was like on like a balcony and he um, spit over I it. I thought that was a Mac fans, Con boy though. who did that. Honestly, probably. I'm pretty sure he did that. <laughs> probably got on Haley. <gasps> oh my I, God. I Can you miss her just catching it? <laughs> I'm gonna have to check and see if I can show this. I don't, I, it's not that bad. I don't know why I wouldn't be able to. But um, one time when I worked at Clever, Justin Bieber was like one of, uh, Selena Gomez actually was one of the big reasons that Clever TV first got big numbers because I don't know if it was like a contest or something. They got like featured on Selena Gomez's YouTube. And this was all like when YouTube first started back in like, 2008. But that's how like Clever TV started going to like young Hollywood and Justin Bieber was definitely one of the main people that they covered. We talked about like during the Taylor Swift lookalike thing, Clever's placement on red carpets was never that great. Like we never got the huge celebrities. That was pretty rare. <laughs> but we did get this brand deal one time where it wasn't even, I think we did it for free, but it was like, this was so worth it that we were gonna do it anyway. And it was for Pencils of Promise, which is Scooter Braun's charity. Justin is like, was one of the spokespeople for it. And it's like, they build schools in Africa or something. So it was like, we were gonna be able to premiere an exclusive video of Justin announcing something. And it was all about Pencils of Promise, but it was like a 30 second video and it was only gonna live on Clever. And he was gonna tweet it out. So it was like guaranteed to do well, huge get. And we never got to like interact with him. They filmed the footage and then just sent it to us. We get this footage and they sent us the raw footage. Wait, 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 wait. You had to edit it? Why wouldn't they send it to you edited? I mean, I did not, I did not personally, not but like someone at Clever did, <laughs> yes. Really? Yeah, they, I think they just sent the raw footage and then I don't think we got paid for, I don't remember. Um, but anyway, we had it like in, we had this thing called the WTF folder and it was like when the editors got bored, they would make stupid edits of things or if there were certain clips that were really funny, they always sent in there and this one, was one of the favorites because they kept reading him the lines to say, like he couldn't retain more than a few words at a time. So it was very much like being fed to him piece by piece. But <laughs> they go, hey, Clever TV, I'm Justin Bieber. That was all he could handle at one time. <laughs> and he goes, hey, Clever TV, I'm Justin Bieber. And then they go, do you want to do that again? And it's like, they're off camera. You can't see anyone else. It's just him. And he goes, nope. <laughs> this was the biggest thing ever for Clever. We were getting a Justin Bieber, like he was going to say Clever TV and he couldn't even be bothered to say it twice. <laughs> so literally the, the WTF video is, uh, there's some clip that plays before it and it's like, the moment we've all been working so hard for. <laughs> and then it cuts to Justin. And Hi Clever TV, it's Justin Bieber. You wanna do that again? Nope. So he would get a lot of lines wrong throughout the whole thing? I mean, he he couldn't because they'd only give him like five words at a time. Because I was about to ask, like, was it giving like buttery flaky crust? Do you know that? TikTok? I could, I, I could. Mean, that line? No, I don't know what you're talking about. Buttery flaky crust? Oh my God, I'm sorry. I never understand your references. No. To be clear, this video that we're about to watch is not the clip of him saying this, but this is what actually made the cut. I don't know, it's stupid. It's like a PSA for this Pencils of Promise thing. So he definitely was not super excited to do it and just had to do it as a favor to Scooter, but it has just lived on as one of our favorite moments I find ever. that so funny. Like, listen, I know that he got famous at a very young age, but at the same time, his start was because he literally waited outside of a building for Scooter Braun. Or was it for Usher? It was for Usher. Usher, uh, sure. yeah. Yeah. And like sang for him out of like sheer desperation to be famous and like to be recognized. And I just find it interesting what that kind of fame and wealth and stuff does to you where you're just like, oh, gotta do this now. It's like, you begged yeah. for this. You begged for this. It doesn't mean that it can't be hard or annoying or like have bad parts in general but I like i it. just find it interesting you found it and i'm like it's only 30 seconds long so it was this the whole campaign was um there was a website that it would link you to and it's what did justin say <laughs> so the idea is that they're screaming too loud so you can't hear him oh yeah i was like is the mic off <laughs> Yeah, no, so it was like, what did Justin say? And then you have to go to this website to find out. And then what he was actually saying was like, hey, Clever TV, I'm Justin Bieber. Pencils, I promise, blah, blah, blah. Well, uh, I think 
that that wraps us up. It does. It does. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And it, it was a whirlwind. But what episode do we have that isn't one? I feel like it happens the most when we like have topics, but we aren't that invested in them. So then our brains kind of like trail off when we're talking about them. And we're like, oh, here's five other topics that are completely irrelevant. But enjoy. Yeah. But either way, um, thank you guys for sticking around if you made it this far into the episode. Thank you guys for those of you who have subscribed. If you haven't, please consider subscribing or listening to us on Did other- we thank you for 50,000? Oh my God, we did it. We have to put in something. You guys, it happened so fast. We thought it was going to take a few more days and then it was like a couple hours. And we're, you did forget it. Forget 50. We're at 51,000. It's in Shit's fucking going insane. crazy. We're going to be at 100K soon. We get another plot. All plan. right, all right, sister, relax. <laughs> but anyway, um, we are on all streaming platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. I don't know. Anywhere you hear podcasts, we're probably there. So please consider listening, watching, all of that stuff. Thank you guys so much. We love you and we'll see you next Sunday. Bye. Bye.